There's a lot of things that I like about the Honda Ridgeline, but there are also a couple of things that are not my favorite. This is the 2023 Black Edition Honda Ridgeline, and I'm gonna go through it from back to front and just let you guys know what I enjoy about the truck and what uh, could use improvements or that is not my favorite. And I have had this truck for about eight months now, driven it a little bit over 13,000 miles, have done a few road trips from Florida to Nebraska, Nebraska to Utah. So I have driven it quite a bit um, and had four bigger guys in there and had all of our stuff packed in here. So we have gotten some good use out of it. So I think this will be a, a decent review. The first thing that we're gonna talk about is the tailgate. And if we just open it up normally, you'll notice that it slams down. Some trucks ease down and have a bit of a cushion, go a little bit slower and help you, but this one certainly does not. And it's pretty heavy. But a feature that I do like about it is that we can pull this lever here and we can open it up from the side. This is super nice for carrying heavy objects and you can place it directly into the box as opposed to having to lift it over the tailgate and strain your back. So that's super helpful and it's also helpful when there are things in the front of the box and you can reach all the way up there quite a bit easier than having to reach across the entire tailgate. And the truck does come from factory with a bed liner or their version of a bed liner so you don't have to add one at all. And I think my favorite feature of this truck is inside the box, there is a compartment that we can open up just by pulling up this little lever. And we've got a full compartment in here that I did just test and it's completely waterproof. So you can put whatever you want in there and it will stay dry, also stay safe because we can lock that there. This compartment does double as a cooler. We've got our drain plug here that we can just unscrew um, to drain out water, but we can fill it up with ice and go tailgating with it. It's a really awesome feature of the truck. We do have our jack and our spare tire under here, so we don't have to worry about going underneath the truck and grabbing the spare if we do need to fix a flat. I keep most of my towing stuff in here and my straps my medical equipment, um, basically anything that I don't need all the time in there, um, in that compartment. And that way it's not sliding around the box of the truck. It just stays put in that compartment and I don't have to listen to it or feel it while I'm driving. The truck bed compartment is quite sizable. I'm able to store all of this inside that compartment. So everything does fit right in here which is awesome because otherwise I would just be having this stuff moving around in the truck bed. And this is stuff that I do want to carry with me at all times, just in case I need it. Um, so that's awesome that I don't have to worry about keeping it in the truck bed or having containers flying around in the bed. This is what the compartment looks like, completely full of all my stuff. Still some more space if I want to add some other things, but I've got all my boxes here ready to access, my hitch ready to go as well. One thing that is more difficult about having all this stuff that uh, are kind of essential to my road trips is that because it is under here, if I've got the box completely full, I'm gonna have to move everything off of this area so I can lift it up. So if you're on the side of the road and you need that tire or you need one of the first aid kits, that's an issue because you're gonna have to unload half the box of the truck so that's not great, but there's not much of a way to fix that uh, except for to keep the essential items more accessible. I will say something about the bed liner that I don't really enjoy is that it is quite slick. So if you do put things in the box of your truck, they will slide around quite a bit. But to help with that, we've got the hooks here, which we've got a fair amount of them. We've got two on the left back, two in the left front, two in the right front and then once again two on the right back you'll notice we do have the cargo lights in the box of the truck which when you open up the tailgate normally for some reason they don't turn on but if you open it up sideways they turn on 
I'm not sure if there's something wrong with my truck specifically or if that's just a odd design, but we can turn on the lights in the cab too. What we've got here is an outlet. Nothing too exciting. A lot of the cars have them now, but yeah, just a regular uh, 115 volt outlet. Oh, oops. You'll notice I do have a Tana cover on this truck. So I've got the bars on the side. So that does restrict how far this guy can go up. So it is a bit of a pain. It is supposed to go up a fair amount more, but I still have plenty of space to reach in there and grab all my stuff. This truck bed is quite a bit smaller than a F-150 or a 1500 Silverado. Um, it's not only narrower, shorter, but it's also not as tall. So I've got a Arctic 65, and if I wanna put the Tana cover over it, it does sit a little bit too high, so I have to kind of slam the Tana cover over it. So that's not ideal, um, which in a normal truck, it would fit fine. So if you're looking at buying the Honda Ridgeline, I would make sure you're not hauling too large of items frequently and you'd want to have a ton of cover at the same time because that does become quite difficult. So we will switch from the box. Oh, I don't think I talked about the speakers. So there are also in-bed speakers, literally in the truck bed on the left side and the right side. So in the cab, which I will show you guys in a little bit, we push a few buttons and the music that was playing in the cab will switch to playing in the box of the truck. So between having the music playing through the bed of the truck and then having this compartment full of beverages for tailgating, it's a really awesome tailgating truck. And one feature that I forgot is the wheel well area. So we just got a little hump here, which they actually designed the box so it fits perfectly a sheet of plywood and it's not sitting on the wheel wells too much that it's going to hurt the wood um, so you can throw in quite a few sheets but it also doesn't have a very big payload so you can't throw in that many sheets so we will go to the back of the cab first which we do have a cup holder on each side and a pretty spacious back here um, with the seats folded up and I do have a Great Dane as well as a dog that's like 85 pounds and he's a mix of like six different different species, but uh, they fit both perfectly back here and comfortably just on a couple of dog beds. I do put the dog beds down because there is this plastic piece here that holds the seat in and I think that'd be pretty uncomfortable if they were to lay on that. Another thing that's nice about the back is that it does have vents. I know some trucks don't have it. Um, my parents' truck doesn't have it, and I'm always sweating in the back while they're freezing in the front. So this is a nice addition. And we also have two USB ports here for charging phones or what have you. To put the seats down, we just pull this handle, and they slide down. We can push it down there. And we can do the same with the other side. Just showing you guys how I fit in here. I am six foot two and my head's not hitting the ceiling. My legs do have plenty of room not hitting the front seat. Of course, there could definitely be more room, but uh, overall it, it is very comfortable. And I did ride all the way to Zion from Nebraska in the back here. Even though it's my truck, I, I rode in the back and other people are driving, but that's okay with me. I can sleep. We do have, well, I guess a magazine. Um, two more cup holders and an armrest there. So I will fold this guy back up because I rarely have more than just me and my girlfriend riding in the truck. So I don't have that seat down very often. And we open up the front. So we've got the buttons here just for all the windows. Then the button for the gas door and a few shelves here just for holding stuff. Um, and as I did mention before, we do take a lot of road trips in this vehicle and the seats are very comfortable, not something that's gonna hurt your back. Um, maybe after like four hours, it, it'll start to ache a little bit, but uh, they are also comfortable to sleep in as well. Okay, so we are inside the truck. 
I'm just going to start it up, which it is a push button start. So we'll give it a start. This is what the dash looks like. It's telling me to fasten my seatbelt. Something that is different about Honda is that you are shifting the truck with these buttons. So if we wanna go in reverse, we pull this down, lights up green. If we wanna go in neutral, push that, or drive, we push the drive button. And this vehicle also has sport mode. So if we push the drive button again, it goes into sport mode and it shows an S there on the bottom of the screen. So it uh, basically just revs up the vehicle a little bit more, um, quicker acceleration. And I also use that for towing, which is another thing that I was gonna bring up. This truck actually does not have a tow mode, which is odd because it uh, has a hitch and it can tow 5,000 pounds. But uh, yeah, it doesn't have a tow mode. So you're just supposed to use sport mode is what it says in the manual. So I do do that and it does pull fine. But it is a little bit annoying that I can only pull 5,000 pounds is when you're hauling a U-Haul or hauling a boat. Sometimes they do get a little bit on the heavier side and when you're reaching that uh, 4,000, uh, 4,500, you can definitely feel it on the truck quite a bit. And it also uh, makes the truck sway or fishtail once in a while if uh, you're pulling something too heavy. Another feature about this truck is that when you are at a stop sign or stop light and you push in the brake, the truck will shut off to save gas, which is a feature that I do enjoy um, because I'm at stop lights quite often going to work. But if you wanna shut that off, you can just push this button here and, oh, I guess you didn't see it, but it'll disable it. Another cool feature is this button here. So I'll push this while I show you guys the screen. And this just gives us a couple of different traction options. We've got normal, snow, mud, and sand. I have gone through about six inches of snow with this, which it has actually handled quite well. I've had it for one winter in the snow in Minnesota and Nebraska going through like six to eight inches of snow, um, no issues at all. And I've passed the two wheel drive trucks or the regular cars, um, some crossovers that uh, don't have the all wheel drive or the four wheel drive. And they're either on ice or too much snow. So this definitely handles it well. With the black edition, we also get the sunroof. So we just pull this guy back and the sunroof opens which I do love a good sunroof, so that's always fun. And we also have this back window that opens up just by pulling this button next to that other one. Those are two features that I definitely enjoy. We also have our heated seats here, which are just for the driver and passenger seats, none in the back. But for the back, we are able to control their air condition settings. They don't have controls back there, but we are able to bring down the temperature for them, turn up the fan, which I definitely like to do for my dogs as it does get a little bit hotter back there. The driver and the passenger are able to have different temperatures. I can be on low, she can be on whatever, but if we wanna stay with the same temperature, we can just push sync and everything will be the same. One thing that I don't really enjoy about this truck is that to use Apple CarPlay or Android CarPlay or whatever, whatever it's called, I guess I don't really know. Um, you do have to have your phone plugged in. I know some cars work wirelessly and it's able to just pop up on the screen, which is normally much quicker. You have to plug your phone into here, in the USB port, and it does take probably about 10 seconds for it to load up here. So I'm just plugging my phone in and we'll go to the home button. This will light up green and we've got our Apple CarPlay. So that's always nice to have. Got our maps, music. I don't really know what that is. And with this truck, we do have navigation that's built into the truck, which I never use. I just use the Apple CarPlay. So don't really know how to use it, but it looks a little funky. So we're not gonna show you that. The truck bed audio to get that going we can just click that button. This is just saying that the speakers inside the truck are not gonna be on, only the speakers outside the truck in the truck bed. 
so just letting us know and then we would just go to audio and turn on some music there not much for apps on here to be honest but you know besides for apple carplay i i really don't don't think i really need anything as far as driving down the interstate going nice and fast using cruise control there are a few buttons here that are helpful so we've got the normal set resume buttons cancel but there's also this button here that lets us decide how close we want to get to the car in front of us before our vehicle actually brakes itself and adjusts its speed to the cars in front of us so we're not crashing into them um, and there's no need for us to hit our brake. Definitely pay attention to make sure it's going to work, but uh, it is helpful and makes drives less stressful. This button here is for lane keep assist, just keeping the vehicle in between the lines and the road. I was a little bit disappointed with the lane keep assist. I know it's supposed to keep you in between the lines, but I thought it would work a little bit better, and I do think it should work a little bit better. But if you are kind of drifting off the side of the road, it's gonna budge you a little bit and vibrate, but it really doesn't pull you back into the road. So not all that helpful, but it's there. The phone controls, which I really don't use to be honest, um, just for changing songs here and the volume. We've got a few controls over here. We've got the cargo light, the outlet for the back. Oh, this must be, an option to get a uh, larger watt outlet in the back. We can turn off the traction control, the lane keep assist, and this is, then you're not running into the car in front of you, so not really sure why you turn that off. This button, this is for when you are getting too close to a vehicle or another object, and it does beep at you, which it does get a little bit annoying, if it's going off for a while, but it's also very helpful. Just got the center console, but you just pull this guy back and it just pulls back like that. And I did get a little divider here just to keep things separated, a little bit more organized. And I guess in there we do have a USB port as well as a power outlet. One of the circular ones, not the, not the prongs. All right, so just looking underneath the hood here, nothing too crazy, not a huge engine, but definitely works. Um, one thing that I'm just noticing, I haven't opened the hood too much, but we have to use the bar. It doesn't have the hydraulics that hold up the hood, which you'd think for a 2023 vehicle, it would have that, but that's okay. So we'll close them. The headlights are very nice, especially when they're not completely covered in bugs they are extremely bright i absolutely love them they completely light up the road no complaints there whatsoever and we do have the black edition here as i mentioned so we've got a little bit nicer rims um, everything is blacked out here black door handles black rims a little bit nicer tires and a few more features that i did add before one thing that I haven't showed you is the exhaust system, which we've got our two tailpipes here. So that's good. And this is just that compartment that's underneath the truck. As far as towing, we've got a receiver here, the two hooks and the electrical port here. And I normally just have to use an adapter to hook up a trailer. So overall, it has been a fantastic truck for me. As I mentioned, I do have a few complaints about the truck, but Overall, it is positive, definitely a good experience with it. I do miss the towing capacity of my old truck. I had a Silverado 1500, and I didn't need to worry about towing anything too much, but I really don't haul things all that often with this truck anymore. I did have a heavier boat that I needed the bigger truck for, but now that that's sold and I currently live in Nebraska, I don't have much of a use for a boat. Um, so this truck is definitely suiting my needs.